Rack Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for another episode of Frag Tag Radio. And here with you today are your boys, Pradius and J Ray. Matter of fact, your boy Def from above. And uh, guesting with us today is a uh, fellow podcaster, Godfrey from Gamertag Radio. Welcome along with us, brother. Hello, everyone. What's going on, man? Not too much. Just been uh, mainly getting down on this Killer Instinct, trying to learn Spinal. Yeah. Hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fun game. I, I love Killer Instinct, man. So, oh, yeah. great game. And it's free, too, guys. Come on, download it. You can download uh-huh. it and play online. Especially since they're you rotating a free character. So Yeah, yeah I think yeah. Uh, Orc is the free character right now. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I think they're they they're always changing characters like every few weeks or every month or something like yeah, that. Every so week now. yeah, oh every week, oh nice, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think last week was Thunder, and now this week starting with Orchid. Orchid, yeah, nice, nice. But yeah, uh, so first we want to get those plugs out there, and uh, J Ray is the man. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Well, we're on uh, several apps, mostly uh, Android apps, a couple iOS apps. Uh, over on Android, we're on the Appy Gamer, which is the big one. Um, you know, download the app. Appy makes me happy. Appy makes me happy. Uh, World of Video Game News, Game RSS, and uh, now on iOS and Windows 8 phones. We're also partnered with Game On, which you know they're they're now on iOS. We've been partnered with them for a while. Uh, shouts to Troy over there. Really? Shouts? <laughs> shouts <on. laughs> Xbox One News and Xbox Game News also on the Android side of things. And of course, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, all, you know, several. You can find us anywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. All right. And so um, with that, we uh, first a couple episodes ago, we had talked about uh, a bunch of different things that uh, we were kind of hoping would be there at the launch for Xbox One. And that kind of and kind of weren't there, and then also some other things that we that we wanted to see, um, you know, just added on there, like uh, support for the external hard drive, uh, yeah. the actual in, internal streaming, so I don't have to hook up my Elgato every time I want to stream. Some of them are coming in March. Yeah, so, they, so a lot of the social features they're integrating into one place, supposedly. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. and then uh, the big thing is uh, the party chat. I mean, it was perfect on 360, and yeah, you know the, they the, kind of jacked that up. It's like they they took a step backwards yeah. for party chat on Xbox One. I really don't understand why the party chat defaults to off, and then you have to turn on the party chat after you join in. It, it should have been it should have been like default, right? Like when you join in, it should just like because right now it, it sounds like it's very confusing. Every time somebody joins your party chat, you know? Yeah, and then you talk and you're like, hello, and they can't hear you, so you got to set it to on, but you wouldn't have joined the party if you wanted to. I mean, if you joined the party, you would want it on, yeah. you know? So it's it's kind of... And then other times, you join the party and you turn the chat on and it says not available right now with some little error code, or it turns on and you can see your little blip moving when you talk, but the other person can't hear you and you can't hear them. Yeah, it's, Although, it's, I found out the only sure fix for that is to actually turn off your Xbox One, unplug it from the back, plug wow, it back really? in, and then turn it back on. And it, it'll work every time. Every time. Yeah, when you, who wants to go through that green screen? Yeah, really? The green screen takes a good like, 30 mm. seconds to load every time you do it. But yeah, um, is there any uh, features in particular that, uh, that you're hoping for, Godfrey? Um, I know people mentioned a couple of things like they wanted to see who's on, who who goes online and stuff uh, I like Notifications, that for yeah. Xbox but I think because of the amount of people there's on the list now you can have like what a thousand friends or unlimited whatever but I, I, I would like to see like maybe my favorites or my right. closest friends yeah. Yeah. to pop up at least I know they're on you know I think that would be a lot easier for, instead of me going back to my list and check who's online because you find yourself checking your friends list all the time yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's then, just a long, it's a very long process, man, for me to like, invite someone. You know, unless there's a game that shows you it was online, like a lot easier, you know, from the, from the screen instead of going back to the friend list. Right. The dashboard. Uh-huh. And then also uh, a lot of the apps that still aren't snappable, like Skype, uh, 
Skype needs to be snappable. Uh, yeah. You know, and certain apps like whenever I get an achievement on Forza and I want to see the, the achievement, the details, it takes you out of Forza and into the achievements app. It'd be nice yeah. if you could at least just snap, you know, snap that achievement to the right and look at it real quick while you're still playing. Like I yeah. said, yeah. I feel like just an overlay similar to 360s that has the main core features in it yeah. that you could bring up at any time would solve that, you know, that without taking you out of the game, just overlay it over the game. Yeah. And, you know, have your party chat, your achievements, your friends, just the main core features in that, I think that that could fix it. We probably won't see that, but, you know, I feel like that would yeah. be a quick fix. Well, I, I, we had, uh, what was it, last week we had uh, Aaron Greenberg and um, and Albert Pinello from uh, Microsoft, the Xbox team, and, and we asked those questions about that, like, you know, because um, usually on the older, X, you know, the Xbox 360, we'll get, like, maybe two updates per year, you know, the, the spring dashboard update or, or the, the fall update and uh, we, I asked him, look, like, is this going to be the same? Is it going to be a faster process, you know, um, updating the Xbox One? And they said that, you know, now they have a bigger team that's going to be um, working on that. Right. And, and their goal is to have updates, like, a lot faster than, than just, like, you know, twice a year. So we're going to see a lot of updates throughout the year, you know what I'm saying? So... Whatever we have now, by the end of, of this year, is going to be a lot better, and it's going to be like that, like, you know, from now on, you know, we just got to be patient, because it's only been, like, what, a couple months that the yeah. Xbox One been out, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think the first one they they said was March, and then after that, they said they'd hope to have another one by E3, so. That, yeah. Well, the reason why they're, they're, they're launching it now in March is because, uh, you know, one of their biggest games is coming out. Titanfall. Titanfall, Titanfall yeah. And, and that is going to attract, that's going to attract a lot of the, the fans that you know, hardcore fans that haven't bought, haven't purchased the the uh, Xbox One, and the new people that just doesn't, you know, they they're never been a fan of Xbox, but this game got their attention. They're gonna buy two, so you know, Microsoft is gonna go all out and 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 fix these uh, problems that everybody's been complaining about, and uh, you know, they, and it's a perfect time because imagine having these issues when Timefall comes out. Yeah, you know, I, the true. party chat is, is is bad. It, it, people will be really frustrated with all the updates. I thought they said that um the purpose of the Xbox being in sleep mode is that way it can up- update without you turning on the Xbox. So you wouldn't even it can. know when the updates it can, are happening. Yeah. It, it actually did that for Crimson Dragon for me, which was nice. You know? Yeah. And it, one of the things that I know you had mentioned with Titanfall coming out, uh, do you see the rumors with the Titanfall console? console? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, or if they just got it kind of photoshopped from um, the controller. Yeah. Well, I, what I heard, uh, what I read online, um, I heard that was the plan, but um, that design got, uh, I think, Did it get canceled. proven to be fake? Yeah, it was No, I, I, think, I think it was real. I think they were playing, because usually... Usually, when a, a, a huge title uh, comes out for for any console from Xbox, yeah, even yeah, the first one, they always have that you know limited edition console. console yeah, they've done that with uh, Gears. Halo. I still got the Gears of War 360. Uh, Call of Duty, I think they've done it like that too. You know. Yeah. Well, I know that there was so, also rumors of a white one coming out uh, yeah. without a disc drive, and then like that. a terabyte hard well, drive one coming out. Drop. Like they're supposed yeah. to yeah. see the price drop. I see that happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I see that happening because. Because the, the the thing is with them, they don't want. Their goal is to still have connect attached uh, with with Xbox One. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna let connect go. Yeah. So no SKUs without so. a connect whatsoever. I yeah. agree with you there. Yeah. I don't. I don't, I don't think it should it, it should be without connect either. I mean, but without yeah. a disc drive, I've actually found myself purchasing all my games digitally. I mean, I'm running out of space because of it, so I'm not going to be able to continue doing that unless they patch in support for external hard drives. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I've got, like, nine games now digitally, so I like it that way, being able yeah. to just switch games on the fly without yeah. changing the disc. But I can't but continue see, that. You know what I like about that is because, like, last year during the whole E3 drama, oh, you know, yeah. I was kind of I was excited with the whole uh, family share, me too. Um, me, the whole we, digity, we the were too. Stuff. We were bummed but out. I think about the changes. I they think made. a lot of people were they were not ready for this. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, they are going to bring this back. Um, maybe hopefully later this year. Um, but it would be nice. People it, were not ready. They were complaining about something that they never took their time to right. actually read about it. And and in a way, I, I blame Microsoft <laughs> for this because they. Bad message. Really Bad, yeah. the they, didn't, they didn't. They didn't do a good job of, of explaining these yeah, features and and really. That's right. And and I guess I kind of go back to back in E3 when PlayStation 
kind of announced that they were going to be charging for PlayStation Network subtly. They, they, they kind of did it subtly after they touted all their good features. Microsoft, it was all bad, bad press the whole time with Microsoft yeah. during that point. You know, they, yeah, they didn't do a good job of hiding the bad things they and did. really presenting the good things. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I agree with you, Godfrey. I mean, I, I, we were bummed out when they made the changes that they made because I think their original vision was going to be incredible. And, and I think that would have, honestly, that that would have been huge for them. And it would have been, like, something totally different that no other company is doing right now. Like, it's cool because usually we, we get a lot of games early, you know, uh, right. some of them um, digitally, some of them just with disc. But it would be cool to, like, send the game that I have to my co-hosts for them to also check it out. And we could just exactly. you know, yeah. and, and, and talk about it on a podcast. Like, that would be great and a lot easier instead of trying to get multiple copies from the companies. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that would have been well, perfect, perfect, perfect. And it- and it's weird because getting review copies from the different publishers, you know, for some reason they, they, they still want to send me physical copies, even if it's, you know, to review the game before it comes out. And I've even mentioned to some of them like Ubisoft and I'm like, well, you know, with the games releasing day and date, you know, with the physical counterparts, why, why don't y'all just do, you know, the digital code so that you could you know, save money on shipping? And on, you know, discs and all that, it would be just easier that way. Yeah. But, I mean, some of them just still prefer to send the physical disc for some reason. Uh, I, I think it's a little tricky. It all depends on, um, I, I think it all depends on the company they, that, let's say, um, like, let's say Ubisoft, maybe they don't allow to do that with Microsoft or, like, trying to give out, like, multiple copies digitally like that. Or sometimes it will be a lot easier just to send the disc to, to the blogger or podcast because then you don't have to of, deal with the, the actual Xbox Live part of it yeah right? yeah. yeah I see what yeah, you I mean it's a lot it's, it's tricky with the whole <laughs> digital stuff like it, it's a lot easier for first party companies to do that but when right. it comes to third party it, it's it's tricky because of, of the company that they are are working with you know with Microsoft or Sony or even Nintendo like it all depends you know like if you notice there's no digital games uh, of Ubisoft through the eShop of uh, of the Wii U I, I don't know of all of them but some of them right out there you know what I'm saying so it's, it, it's it's a little tricky well if if Wii U don't change direction soon they're not going to have any third party games on the <laughs> digital store no. It'll be the Dreamcast of this generation. Well, yeah, I, I, I like too. it. I, li- I like the Wii U, man. People like to bash it and stuff, but I, like I, I think it's a great it's console, you know? It, it's, it's a fun it's console. It's a great console. It just needs some great games. And family around yeah. and where yeah. everybody's just in one room to play. But yeah. for us to like, you know, I, I hate to use the term hardcore gamers, but for them to say, yo, Godfrey, let's jump on the Wii U today so and let's play some Mario, it's not likely to happen as if, as if you like went over to somebody's house and was like, yo, I got the Wii U, I got this, the new Mario 3D world. Oh, let's give it a try, you know? Yeah, well... That's when it's more fun. It's, um, I'll tell you this, like, I, I think that during the holiday season, the Wii U had, like, the best, in my opinion, the, the had the best games yeah. That, you yeah. know, for the holiday season because, honestly, like, the launch of the, uh, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, like, dude, I love the console, I love the features, but the games were kind of like okay. It wasn't like groundbreaking or anything like that. Especially you know with the but PlayStation Four, because they really didn't have a great launch lineup at all. At all, like I, you know, I know people were excited about Killzone, but really, it was that like major, like you know, I, I think Infamous Second Son is going to be ten Definitely. times better than all those games that came out. You know, what I'm Definitely, saying? Like, and and that you know, once that got pushed out of the launch lineup or the launch window. I was bummed out about it tremendously because that was really Same the here. one game and that I, I was... Honestly, that was the reason why I wanted to buy a PlayStation yeah. 4 because of that game. Yep. You know and, but, so I'm, I'm just waiting in March. I'm going to buy it. But honestly, like I had a blast with the you know, with, with uh, the Mario games that came out for the Wii U. Look, they even had Pikmin and all these games that came out uh, throughout the year, 104, 101. But see, I, I guess with Nintendo, that's, that's their problem, though. They're so reliant on their first party to the point where... That's all they have. Yeah, it, it, it's. I mean, they need more third party support if they're going to pick up and run with the Wii U. And I, I, yeah. I don't know for whatever reason that's just not happening right now. No, and, I agree. I, I, I totally agree with that. But at the same time, like, there's no other company like Nintendo. Like, there's when not. It comes to like first party, you know, first first party games. You're right. Sorry, yeah. like I love Xbox. I, I, you know, I like the the PlayStation. Like. Sorry, those games from Nintendo can't compare to any other game out there. You're right. Like Smash and Smash Brothers, we've Smash talked. Smash Brothers, they tried 
They tried to, uh, <laughs> other companies, what was it, Sony tried to do the, yeah. the All-Star? Yeah, it didn't work out All-Stars. too well. But, I mean, we've it's talked on like the show, and, and I know we've talked on uh, about Nintendo before, and part of the problem is that they are, they're, they're the, they, they do first-party games unlike anybody, and but they can't seem to pump them out quick enough they to can. keep it to where that they can rely on those solely, you know? It's, it's... It's they're easy. coming out and they do do a good job of pumping them out you know to Yearly. a certain extent like yeah year but two years, I just yeah. don't think they can do it to the point where they can just sell console souls no. solely on that and uh, you know that's what scares me I could see down the line them becoming Sega you know in yeah, 10 no. years you know well, what I mean they're talking about mobile have yeah. you seen that yeah, the, yeah. where they're yeah, yeah, yeah. so the thing is do you would you would you want a Mario game to come out every year a I would have a game to come out every year you, I mean you know, then you'll water it down and the, but the, the Mario the franchise, the Call of Duties of, of 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 Nintendo, it'll never get that way. Yeah, but Mario, Mario franchise is so like varied. I mean, you can come out with a, a well, Paper Mario and yeah. then a Mario, Mario Galaxy. Mario versus Sonic at the Olympics. There's so yeah, Mario yeah. Kart. You know, I mean, there's so many different types of Mario games you could come out with and rely on. It's not. I, I don't right. think it would ever be in fear of being a Call of Duty where you'd have a, a Mario game annually. But um, you know. If it got that way, well, they then could Nintendo's drop like two of their um, first party games, like two this year, like a Mario and a Zelda, the next year, uh, a, a Metroid, and you know, one of their other games. So that way, it switches <laughs> up like, every happen. year or two. <laughs> Get a Star Fox yeah. in there. Star Fox next year. Star Fox is my jam. Yeah. yeah, Star Fox was incredible. Yeah, especially. Yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm curious to. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see like what Nintendo are, are planning to do during E3 because uh, we were there last year. Um, and uh, they had like a private, uh, like a private event. Um, yeah, right, there right. was no press conference at all. But I, the thing that I like about this is what that we got together with the developers and we were there, like playing the games with them and, and actually asking them questions about their games that they were promoting. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I love the whole press conference because the press conference, you you sit there, they do these crazy announcements and everybody's like flipping out like oh my god it's the new zelda new this new that but right you know it's a lot harder to do interviews around that time and it, you know during e3 but like that how they had it last year was pretty cool so i'm wondering how they're gonna do it. are they gonna have a major press conference they're gonna have like a very small you know press event you know like I last think, year i think they probably need a major press conference because they, they need kind of a bang you know they, they need they need a jump start. they can't do that nintendo direct thing again that, that no, didn't work out I for them at all yeah, yeah 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 i mean nintendo direct is more for like the hardcore gamers hardcore fans it's not like the average joe they just sit there like it's not for like cnn you know right. <laughs> those type yeah. of mainstream people you know but uh i mean I honestly like what they need to do is just get the fans and the hardcore gamers excited because honestly yeah. like if you don't have that if you don't have those people lining up at midnight just waiting for those games your product is going to fail man you You're know right. Sony had, had had a huge you know line of people just waiting for for the console same thing with Xbox so that's what Nintendo needs man you know they're doing an amazing job right now with the 3DS they they are yeah, they, they are, are. Yeah. They that are. System that's their saving grace has right now the yeah, best games right now period yeah, it does and and you wonder why they can do it so well with the handheld market but they can't do it they can't seem to get it right with the, the console with yeah. the console market i mean i say they can't seem to get it right they did get it right with the Wii but that was more of a niche thing yeah, i feel was. like but yeah. you know now i think that they can't rely on that anymore because i think they tried to do that with the it's gamepad over. of the Wii yeah, U just, a little bit but you know, they, they at some point I feel like they're gonna have to decide whether they want to compete directly with Sony and Microsoft. And they should called it the Wii Two instead of the Wii U. Yeah, yeah, that I mean, was a huge confusion. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. I, I think when you ask like the average Joe, like, "Hey, you heard about the Wii U?" It's like, uh, "I have a Wii with an attachment." <laughs> yeah, <that's> exactly. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. It, it's, it was very confusing from the get. I think they should have named it like a totally different name. You know. Yeah. But see, like. Look at the 3DS, 2DS. Is that confusing to you or not? Or not really for you? No, no, not, not at all. Yeah. No. Okay. I, I was just wondering because some people say yes, some people said no. So I, I don't know. But I mean, I guess you, it could be. You know, the three, know, the the, the like DSi, the yeah, DS. That, that kind of got a little out of control there for a little while. Did, but yeah. I mean, all, essentially, they were the same console. And they were they just got, different models. And they got the XL version of each one of those. XL. But, but I guess they're all the same better, console the technically. Are. So you know, it's not really. A, a yeah. successor per se. Just the 2DS is like a cheaper kind of like. It's just one, it's one thing. First step in one the screen with a plastic bar that splits the one screen into two. 
Hey, yeah, my nephew, he, he has a 2DS, and he loves it. He loves it. He always plays his, his Mario, Mario Kart, like Sonic. That's all he plays on the 2DS. So. It looks cool, and yeah. that, that they've got a really good price point. It's like, like what, 120 bucks, which yeah. is a really yeah. good price point. It plays, you know, DS games yeah. and 3DS games. Yeah. That's a huge library Yeah, right there. Right, right now, right, right now, what I have, because uh, I received this a couple of days ago, I haven't really had time to play because I've been really busy with work, but... Um, they sent me. Uh, they tell sent me a Bravely uh, Default. Oh, really? Great RPG, by the way. Yeah, I heard that was really good. It, you know, like the the designs, the music, and man, it's it's amazing. So you guys should check it out, definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah, I hope um the Xbox One comes out when they 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 get more RPGs this year this time around. They're coming. Because, They're coming, especially know, some I love Japanese RPGs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they had a, that, that's the thing. They had a lot of RPGs uh, on the 360. I don't know what in people the, slept. Yeah. I mean, they in the first Lost half Odyssey. of the 360s life cycle. Yeah, yeah there was Lost console. Odyssey. There was Infinite Undiscovery. Blue there was a um, yeah. uh, Blue Dragon, Magna Carta Two. And, uh, and then you had Star Ocean, which was exclusive to Xbox 360 yeah, for like a year before yeah, it came it to PS3. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, yeah. uh, Eternal Sonata was exclusive on 360 oh for a while God, before that it game? came. Amazing. Oh my God, I forgot about Eternal Sonata. Awesome game. Yeah. 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 I, I know, I think um, I think they're going to continue to do that um, for, for this, uh, this generation too, man, because they did a lot. Like, I mean... I had the original Xbox. There was hardly any RPGs on that one. Did, I think they did a, a great job with the 360 one. They did. You know, releasing RPGs. Yeah. Don't so. they still own the Shenmue franchise? Oh, Which man, one? I just watched Shenmue. the video. Shenmue. Shenmue. No, I, I, think I know that's, Sega. That's a, that's a awesome. Sega. That's a yeah, Sega. Yeah, Sega. But Sega published it. I, I, I thought that no, they Sega sold the rights that. to Microsoft a long time ago. I, I mean, I could be no, mistaken, but I don't. They no, just, well, I think what it did was. Uh, they, I think Microsoft published it. They, they might have sure. published it, but they I, maybe they had. I, I thought they had the rights to the franchise itself, but no, no, I don't. Because I, I know if they did have the rights. Uh, what happened right. was okay. The Dreamcast was supposed to. They were supposed to get Shenmue Two. Yeah, right. Um, for for that for that console, but it got canceled for the United States. But in Europe, it yeah. got released. Yeah, um, Shenmue Two. So what they did was they did a deal with with Microsoft. Um, to release that game for that console, then I think they also released uh, Jet Set Radio and a couple other games. Yeah, and, okay, all right. Um, Sega GT, and all but that. I don't know about having the rights. No, that's all Sega. I, yeah, I think okay. They just uh, published it, and what they did was when um, you purchased Shenmue Two, they had um, they had a, a DVD. It gives you like a recap yeah. of, uh, yeah. of Shenmue One. And uh, and it also had uh, part two in it too. You know what I'm yep. saying? So I'd love to see that. They need to go back to, to uh, nice. yes. <laughs> working with uh, Mistwalker again because Microsoft helped fund uh, Mistwalker and and helped that studio come to be. Which uh, the original creator of Final Fantasy uh, has that studio up, and they created Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon exclusively for 360 for in exchange for Microsoft helping them start up that studio. And they were working, yeah. and they were working on a third uh, RPG yeah. called uh, Cry On, which never, which got canceled, never got released on 360. I, uh, I would really like to see Microsoft go back to working with Mistwalker and hopefully get a sequel to Lost Odyssey and uh, possibly some other Japanese RPGs uh, from Miss Walker because they're a great studio. Yeah, I, I agree. I definitely agree with that too. Man. But uh, yeah, and so if, as far as uh, talking about IPs, uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, finally bought the uh, the rights to the entire franchise oh, for Gear from of Gears of War. Yeah. Big move for them. Yeah. Big move for them. Yeah. And who knows how much they that. paid for it? But what, what what confuses me about this whole thing is Black Tusk. They've been working on this so-called game for how long? A year? Two years? More, maybe? And are, now are they just going to drop this this new IP that they were working on um, and, and just start working immediately on a Gears yeah, game? Yeah. You know, well, what are they going to do with this Whatever IP? it was, they did say that, 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 that it's, it's on hold and they're, and, they're all, yeah. and they're all Gears right now. Now, it is good that they got Rod Ferguson to come over there. Yeah, and, uh, and, 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 and Yeah, that was a huge move. Huge yeah, move. It, was, it was. Yeah, to head up and oversee the whole Gears thing. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that when the next Gears comes, out it's going to be good and, pro and better than judgment. probably yeah better than judgment because people can fly you know and then you know not not that they're a bad studio they but did a good job with bulletstorm yeah, yeah they, 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 yeah, bulletstorm was, was a great, great game, game but yeah. they, they just didn't handle gears very well no, no they did yeah judgment was a little i don't know it was very disappointing it was just like if you notice they didn't even market this game like compared to like the past gears that they really like went all all out you know promoting it you know yeah, yeah. uh but I, it's I almost think like they, they knew are, <laughs> they, they're gonna put a lot of money for for 
for the new game, for yeah. sure. Because, uh, you know, if they really want to sell their system, they got to go all out with it, you know? And, and so. you know, Microsoft, they don't have a whole lot of first-party games to, yeah. to fall back on. That's like, true. you know, I mean... So th- this was important that they kept gears in their in yeah. their you know Arsenal in their corner because you know it seemed like Epic was pretty much done making gears games to begin with yeah. uh, at least for the immediate future. So the fact that they bought these rights and, and now that it's it's all theirs, I think it's a huge move, a huge move for them. Yeah, I think uh, I know there was a lot of people complaining, oh, the same franchise. But if you notice during E3, they did mention that they were going to invest a lot of lot of money, I think a billion dollars or so. In, in the new IPs, on yeah. Investing on new IPs, which that's what I want to see. You Me know, too. I love Halo, I love Gears, but where's the new IPs? Yeah, Sunset Overdrive will be interesting. Yeah, sun, yeah, Sunset Overdrive. Cool. Quantum, 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 Quantum Break, Break is going to be Break, awesome. Yeah, Quantum Break, Break is yeah, going to be love awesome. Remedy games, like, Me too. You know, yeah. Alan last. Wake is probably still to this day my, my favorite game on 360. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah, Same it, here, man. Same it's unbelievable. The, Same yeah. Remedy yeah. just does it, man. Down, they just make incredible games. Games, like, they yeah. do. I cannot wait for Quantum Break. I really can't. That that game looks groundbreaking for some reason. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. it just, the graphics and the way how they're promoting it. Yeah, it's like a TV show type thing, like similar to probably uh, Alan Wake. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but who knows, man? Like. I, it's, I can't wait. I'm very excited for that. Seems game. Seems like that, to me that could be the biggest game for this year if they if they do it right. You know? Hopefully they won't release uh, Quantum Break the same day as uh, Red Dead Two or something crazy like that. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Alan Wake releasing on the same day as Red Dead Redemption was one of the biggest mistakes that game and made. That's what hurt it. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean yeah. that that was just because uh, that game deserved a lot more. I mean it, it got the praise down the road yeah. afterwards, but when it first two. yeah when it first came out, I mean. Hard, I was playing it. You were playing it. We were all playing it, but it didn't seem to get the praise that it deserved immediately. And you know, but that game was un- incredible. It was a masterpiece. It was. It really <laughs> was. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, it was because of you guys. I was actually able to pick that game up because I promoted it on every show. <laughs> 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 to this day, you're still talking about Alan Wake on every show. <laughs> yeah. It was just a great game. But yeah. So and then. Tons of rumors getting leaked out this past week from on uh, NeoGAF from some, from some random guy. Uh, forgot what his his handle was. It was something weird. So uh, just running down the list: Halo Five delayed until next year, uh, and Halo Two Anniversary supposedly coming out this year instead. Uh, I have a little story about that, but go for it. Yeah, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, okay. So a couple of years ago, I think it was in uh, I think it was 2011. Uh, we were at A3, and we had a uh, we had an appointment with uh, with Microsoft. They showed us. They were showing us the Halo anniversary, the first one. Right. So we were there, and I was like, "Me, I'm always asking like the tough questions during like during the Q and A and stuff." And I was like, "Hey, look, let me ask you. Um, are you guys going to do the same thing with with Halo Two? Because you know the the tenth anniversary is coming up too. Like, th- actually, is this year the tenth anniversary? Right. And uh, they looked at me. And they started like smiling. They were like, "Well, I think it's too soon. It's you know, let's talk about Halo, the first Halo right now." I'm like, "Okay, they made it kind of <laughs> obvious, <laughs> you know." So I think I, I think that part that uh, Halo Two anniversary is coming out this year. I think it's true. Um, I, I think that uh, with the game with games like Titanfall and Destiny, and who knows what other games coming out this year, first person shooters like and maybe Call of Duty, like they don't want. Um, Halo Five to compete with all those games. You know what yeah, I'm I, I prefer for them to take their time and and do something totally make, different make with quality. Halo. Yeah, yeah. you know, and then just release it because it's November. You know what I'm saying? Well, I've said all along that I found it hard to believe that Halo Five was going to come out this year, just because. I mean, I know E3 is not even here yet, but, but so. just the stuff like with Destiny coming out, like you just said, the stuff that's already coming out this year, I just found well, it hard to believe that they were going to have. We'll no doubt see something on Halo but, Five oh, yeah, at, for sure. at, at, yeah. at E3. That'll be it, though. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Halo but, Five. But as far year. as the game coming this year, you know. Probably not, especially if Halo Two Anniversary is true. Yeah, they'll just use that. Because they're, they're definitely not going to put out both in the same. Because game. they've, I think they already said we would see a Halo game, but they wouldn't call it Halo Five. Yeah. But, 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 then, mean, but then, and then Halo also, game. all right, the next one, Fable Legends, delayed till next year, also, which is another rumor that was on NeoGAF from this supposed leaker. Um, um, wouldn't be surprised at that either, to be quite honest with you. I mean, these are these are big games that take a long time to that's make. That's true. Yeah, normally take you know two to three, four, even four years. I know, mean, you know, 
I guess we'll have to see. But what does that leave first party wise for Microsoft during the holiday That's season? That's what I'm saying. That's true, yeah. They can't rely on Sunset I mean, Overdrive. Uh, That's what they rely Halo on. Two Anniversary is going to be a great game, but it's not going to sell a bunch of consoles. Uh, they, yeah. they, they they need a big hitter like Halo Five yeah. or Fable Legends. They need they need something big for the holidays, bigger than Halo Two Anniversary. I mean, ex- yeah, no, as far yeah. as exclusivity, I know they got uh, Insomniac's got Sunset Overdrive coming out, but I mean, yeah. other than that, what else? If they delayed Fable Legends and Halo Five, and, and what, else what else is there? Yeah, you know. Uh, Look, I, I think <clears throat> I'll say this, man. I think that uh, Microsoft they don't want to make the same mistake that they did last year during E3. Like, don't get me wrong. I think they showed a lot of games. A lot of good uh, games, yeah. A lot of games. Uh, they had some some technical difficulties during the, the presentation, and and, and I, I think people didn't focus on the games. They were focusing on you know the whole drama with Xbox One. So. All those games that they showed is basically they didn't even shine that much, you know. So for them saying that they really, really want to focus on like new IPs, you know, a lot of these games because they really want to push Xbox One out there to the mass. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think they're gonna show us a lot of games during this year's E3. They don't want to make the same mistake as last year. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, so I, I think they probably will have something. We right now is all talk because we don't know what they're gonna show. Yeah, just right. pure speculation. You know so, <clears throat> all right. So, so I think they're gonna show something big. I think so. Well, next uh, on on the rumor list was Crackdown Three not coming until 2016. Damn. Which it it hasn't even been officially announced yet, but we've known that it's been in development yeah. for forever. Every, everyone knows Crackdown Three is being developed somewhere right now. Yeah. And what I was expecting it would come out 2015 at the latest. 2016 is a ways off. Yeah, that's way too far. Especially but, yeah. I mean, don't you guys want this to be a good game? Yeah, well, certainly. Yeah, it want it to be, be a good game, but, I mean, when, when unless you, they just started developing it this which could year. could be the case. You know, I mean, it very well could be I mean, the case. I mean, that's true. It could be. But, I mean, golly, for that long? Yeah. I mean, we're I only mean, talking I mean, two look, years. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pretty this, look, out, though, It's like, 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 I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, right? Yeah. I want that movie to be amazing better than the last three that came out the past few years you know what i'm saying like i want this to be good so take your time same thing with this if crackdown the, if the next crackdown is going to be good hey let them take their time 2016 why the rush you know it's like i know people. everybody's excited you know for, for the game but yeah i, I mean imagine it, they release it this year and it's a, it's a piece of garbage as a fan you know? as a fan certainly i definitely want you know uh want it to be a great game but as somebody that covers a lot of Xbox stuff, I, I feel like, you know, I just want, that's one of their money makers too. And, you know, we know that they haven't even gotten started really on a new Gears game. And so. Yeah, that's going to probably be 2016. We look yeah. at something, you know, you talk about like 2015, uh, you know, the end of 2015. You're, yeah. you're, what, what you, you know, you, you just expect to see more games coming out around that, that time period. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a problem with waiting for Crackdown to come out in 2016. I just, I'm surprised by it, I guess, is all I could say. Look, you know. I, I think that once you see their press conference during this year, like during this year's E3, that's when you're gonna judge. Like, uh, hey, you're right. are they gonna release some great <clears throat> games or not? Because right now we're in February. You're right. And we you're don't right. have no clue what's coming. No <laughs> clue. Like they might announce a couple of things for spring. Like, you know, we don't even know what's coming out digitally. Just give you know, me like Dragon those... Age and I'll be happy. Just give me a Dragon so, Age. I'm and looking I don't care forward to. Uh, <laughs> Even before Titanfall, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. I'm not even oh, worried. that game is going to be dope. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Close now, yeah. too. I think so. Very yeah. close. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, too, right? and it's weird because this past generation, EA seemed to have a better relationship with, with Sony, but now... With, with, with this new generation, it seems Rolls like, um, yeah, yeah, Microsoft and EA have just, uh, they've partnered up. I mean, Titanfall exclusive, then you got Peggle 2 and Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare timed exclusive. Oh, Peggle 2. Hey, Peggle 2 is a fun yeah, game. Yeah, but oh. it, you know what it is, too? It, 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 yeah. it, it's two things. It's two things. It's money, for sure. Mm, for sure. Microsoft is putting money down, like, hey, look, give us, a, like, a, t- a time exclusive. You know, they'll do that. And... It also, uh, it, it, they've probably done some research, like which console has been selling, uh, not the not the, the most, but actually when they uh, when they release a game for all consoles on, on the Wii, Wii U, Xbox, 360, and, and PlayStation 3, which game, which console. version has been selling yeah. the most? So they're gonna go to, towards that, you know? Yeah. Right. So no, I mean definitely they, it, it, but it definitely does seem like they've uh, they've kind of been. 
hovering around Microsoft a little bit more in the yeah. past because we always saw the Battlefield the the Battlefield <laughs> exclusivity uh, for the DLCs See. come out on Sony first yeah. and stuff you know so. updates first yeah. and stuff like that yeah yeah but remember too who, who's who's the head guy at EA it's Peter Moore he he used to work for Microsoft too so the yeah. relationship yeah well he was yeah. heading up the Xbox you know? division yeah. which yeah. I. I'm glad that uh, Phil Spencer can just handle Xbox now and not have to worry about Don Madrick. Because, yeah. uh, you know, God bless that guy, but he was horrible for Xbox, especially yeah. toward the end. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you noticed, but have you guys read the letter I wrote, uh, what was it, last, sometime last year? Because I was oh, so exactly. pissed off for E3. I sent. Yeah. Uh, I wrote a blog about uh, about Dow Matrix, like you know, talk to the community instead of like just being this business guy. You know, like I understand the whole business stuff. You know, but like I felt like his presentation at E3 was very dry. It was. It was. And very it was dry. more like yeah, like it wasn't for us, like for the the community, for the hardcore gamers. You know what I'm saying? It was it's, for, so for other a, businessmen. I, I wrote yeah, a exactly. blog post about that. I wrote a blog post like, look, you know, I will like for you to come to our show and ask you some questions based on the, you know, the questions that people would like to know, like the fans, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and I think a week later he left Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. last, it was because of your letter. Week, you scared the shit out of him. We had a lot of people. You know, we had uh, uh, Peter Moore, uh, Jay Adler, like a lot of these old guys that used to be part of uh, Microsoft there. And they were very open to talk with the fans. You know, Don Matrick did, has never done that, man. Like what I that I know, I've and never it, done that. No. It's weird because Don Matrick was originally a game developer. I know that's the thing; it's confusing. But maybe sometimes people get gassed up, you know, and they get they reach to this level that they just don't want to deal with the smaller people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With the smaller uh, fan sites, you know. But it, there's there's people out there like you know Phil Spencer. He's taking his time, asking questions from the fans on Twitter. You know, it, he wasn't doing that before. You know what I'm saying? Because the position is at now. He has that freedom now to actually sit there and talk. You know, they yeah. they were missing that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Major Nelson is not, you know, yes, he's doing things from the community and stuff like that, but you need people like Phil, Aaron Greenberg, Albert, Pinello, like those guys in a position guys, to, you know to, to really answer those questions, and you know? Major Nelson's a great guy, but I got to say, man, I don't know how much longer they can keep him as the face of Xbox. They need to get somebody young in there. Oh, don't be dissing, Major. I'm just oh. saying. <laughs> you, it, I mean,. Yo, I'm really cool with Major. Um, you know, he has a huge following too, man. He, he, he does. does. He does. He and, does. You know, he and, and honestly, he's like, also not getting we were, any younger. Like, I like him because he's it, not um, getting any younger. <laughs> so this is what happened with with, uh, with us. Like we went to New York for the, for the Xbox One launch party. Uh, we wanted to cover it uh, from different cities. You know, we got invited to go to Orlando uh, for their launch within the Microsoft Store. But we also wanted to cover the one in L.A. and New York. So uh, Major Nelson hit me up. He, he invited me to go, but I wanted to take my uh, my crew right. to the one in New York. And he was the one that actually contacted the, the PR NGC to, uh, to allow us to go to, to the event in New York. And my staff in, in L.A., they told him, oh, the, we ran out of tickets, and he was actually the one that contacted uh, a couple people to, to let him go inside, you know, for, for the event. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people, some people don't like Major, but when it comes to, like, the community stuff, like, he's he will be there. Like, he will try his best to, like, you know, fix situations. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, if you have issues with, like, a console, and, I mean, he can't do this for every single person, but he tries his best to help out, you know what I'm saying? So... I mean, he definitely does uh, some crazy, some crazy stuff. Like, uh, yeah. what's uh, that 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 vet, that large dude on YouTube, Francis? Francis. He said yeah, he said that, that that Major Nelson came to his house and brought his personal console to oh, show him yeah. the Xbox One. And he sat there. He, he's, yeah. He he actually hang out with him. Like you know, like who does that? Company. It's, uh, especially considering that dude Francis is a notorious Xbox hater and a notorious PlayStation fanboy. Like for yeah. for him to even bother going there, that's that's that's, yeah. that's, that's that was very nice of him. Yeah, I think that's cool, man. Like you know, I, I think companies like Nintendo they started doing that like a couple of years ago. Um, you know, but the first people that started this whole community thing like this was Xbox, and then Sony did did an amazing job after that. You know, like. And then Nintendo, like, well, let me just start doing that too, you know, because because honestly, we're the ones that were there in line, you know, midnight in the cold, you know, we we want these consoles, you know, so we're we're huge fans, and and you know, when we see people like you know Reggie from Nintendo going outside and giving you know 
uh, you know, ch- hot chocolate, you know, and the freezing cold where people were waiting for, for like the 3DS or something like that, you know, like, and talking to the fans, taking pictures. Like, when, when people do that, us fans, we appreciate that so much, you know what I'm saying? And we, we're the ones going to be telling people, like, look, I had a great experience with, with so-and-so. This is why you got to get this console, you know what I'm saying? If, if companies don't do that, we're not going to be supporting them at all. Right. You know? um, with the, the event that you went to for the Xbox One launch, the one uh-huh. at Best Buy in New York City, they had, I think, like 12 people online the day before the Xbox was released. And Xbox, you know, some, some people from Xbox went out there and gave those people um, blankets and, and, like you said, hot chocolate. Yep. It was freezing. It was I, freezing know, I was, cold. I, I was out there that, that night. It was freezing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what? You know what made me like Xbox? Like, um, I think it was, uh, yeah, this was in 2001. I was a huge Nintendo guy. I mean, I'm all about Nintendo. I don't want to hear it. Like, because I, I like the, the Sega Dreamcast. I was also my favorite console. But I'm like, what the hell is this Xbox? Let me just let me just go to one of their events in New York, right? So I go there. I was, I was in line. It was a 48-hour competition. So they had, uh, you know, they had Project Gotham, Halo, uh, Dead or Alive, and a couple of the games. Whoever had the most points at the at the end of the forty eight hours would get like a free trip to Cancun, uh, uh, free games, free Xbox, all this stuff, right? right? So I stayed there for forty eight hours. I was about to die at the end. <laughs> I was so so tired, right? And it was a group, there was a lot of people in line. I think it was like three hundred people. But at the end of the forty eight hours, it was only like maybe twelve people, fifteen in total, right? So we were there, and uh, Jay Adler came up to us. He said, "Hey guys, come um, come upstairs. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you guys." So he took us to this room and stuff, and he surprised us. He's like, "Hey, look, all of you guys are gonna get a free Xbox, and we're gonna give you guys Halo yeah. in advance. Nobody else is gonna have this. You got you guys are gonna be the first ones in the world to have this." I was nice. like, "What?" <laughs> like, and by them just doing that and them talking to us, we got so excited about the product, and we just like started talking about it to like everybody in forums and, and, and the other sites and all that stuff and then after that um i think a week before the launch they called us and they were like look we want to take you to um towards the rust at times square for the launch so i was like okay whatever so we go and then bill gates popped up <laughs> and and right there i was like I, I had my mouth open i was like oh my god this is crazy like you know and Sat down with, he sat down with us. He wanted us to talk about the product to the media, the fans, not fake people. Like, they're not into game. They wanted the fans actually to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? That's so, tight. That's real tight. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, I want to see that from, from companies, man. You know, more, more of that relationship with the consumer. And, I think Microsoft's and always done a, a, a really good job with that, though. You know, that's something that, that, that really has separated them from Sony. I mean, Sony does a good I job agree. of it, too. But, I mean, they, they just seem to, like you said, they were the ones that kind of started that, you know? And yeah. it, it, it's it's something that... I, I think it died I, I think it died down right after Peter Moore left the company. Yeah, that's Don exactly Magic what it did. Took over. Once Don Matrick took over, like I, I noticed it was like slowly dying. But also at that same time that's when we stopped getting like all the cool uh, Japanese RPGs and <laughs> less for less uh, first party exclusives yeah. and like after that it was pretty much just you know connect 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 right yeah, yeah. And, and, and then like <laughs> yeah. this year we'll throw you a Gears next year we'll throw you a Halo and there might be a Forza or a Fable sprinkled in yeah. there but that's all you're getting yeah I, I know like based on people that I heard and had conversations like Don Matrix is a, is a he's cool you know, um, but when it comes to that, like, you know, uh, the community relationship is it, not that great, you know, and and I think that it, it was during the this past E3, it opened their eyes big time, like, man, we're losing them, we can't, we, we can't mess up like this again. You God, know? that um, was a disaster, it really was. That was a disaster. Especially but look, when he started talking about to telling people that they, that they should get a 360 if they <laughs> wanted a console that wasn't always online. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, man, like, right after that. You know, right after that whole situation, look, they hired, you know, Jeff, Jeff that used to work at uh, PlayStation. You know, he's a huge community guy, you know, um, you know, so they're they're making changes. I think I, I think they're they're learning their lesson. man. Yeah, Big it, it, it right definitely sounds like it, because uh, I mean, I, I've never ever in, in, in all my years of watching E3 or covering E3 or anything like that, seen something like I saw when Sony finished their press conference and got the standing ovation. I mean, and that, that wasn't. 
anything Sony did, it was just all the backlash that Microsoft created. It was just insane. It, yeah. it, it, it was. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was very, as a fan, I was so disappointed uh, during E3, and I, and I was excited. I was like, man, I think I'm buying a PlayStation, man, because because of the excitement at that moment. You know, what I'm saying, yeah. Like, Everybody going crazy. It was. Gamers was it it was know. unbelievable, man. I mean, you just yeah. you, you just don't see something like that every day in, in the gaming world. I mean, that was just, it, it was wow. It, you know, and, and Microsoft pulled the 180. And, and, and like we were talking about earlier on the show, it's almost, it, it's almost something, it never needed to be done in the first place. It, that, that was so yeah. unnecessary because all they had to do was properly present what they had coming. And, and I yeah. think everybody would have been fine with it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, man, I know there's some that like their Sony products, like their you know their Xbox products or Nintendo, or whatever. But at the end of the day, when there's competition, we are going to win. Yeah, we have you're so right. Many choices now. I always... back then we didn't have that choice, you know. And now that we have so many options, like hey, from mobile to consoles to PC, like there's so many options now. You know what I'm saying? I... So the more competition. The better the, the better the, the product is going to be. Oh yeah, yeah. And a good example of that, I always go back and I I, I kind of highlight Madden when you talk about competition because when you know as soon as Madden lost their competition, they got content, and we stopped. I agree. Yeah, we stopped seeing great Madden games because um, they, they didn't have to push themselves anymore. You know, and uh, that's kind of you know why competition is so important in this industry because you know like yeah. you said, we win when there's competition, and so. Definitely. When there's I not, people start getting totally. lazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Madden got content, and all it was was a roster update for several years, plus a feature or two, you know. And and uh, yeah. All right, and then so um, being uh being uh, being an Xbox fan like us, I was I was just kind of wondering uh, how do you feel about the whole uh, resolution gate uh, uh, <laughs> uh, propaganda and uh, Tomb Raider? And what all. do you tell people uh, w- uh, when they tell you that PS4 is a better console just because there's a few games on Xbox One that are in 720? Uh, I will say this, man. I don't want to mention too much of it. <laughs> right. I, I think I talked about this so many times, and um, on our last episode, like I said before, we had um, Aaron Greenberg and uh, and and Albert, and uh, we asked him that question, and he was like, well, Albert was very quiet for like a few seconds, like really think to see like what what he was gonna say. And at the end of the day, man, in my opinion, like, look. Uh, when I buy a console, I'm buying it because of the content. I, I could care less about Certainly. specs. You know, if, if uh, yes, there's going to be games that's going to look better on a PlayStation 4 or on an Xbox or whatever. But at the end of the day, man, if I'm getting a great experience and I'm satisfied with the product, then who cares about specs, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, look, I have a lot of fun with my, with my 3DS. Right. Those games are not graphically... Yeah, you know, hell yeah! They're not and amazing graphics. There, you know, there, there's but, a ton of classic games out there that that don't have great graphics, but it, uh, and I just wanted to bring it because it just seems like a lot of people on the internet have been bringing this up. Like it's, it's always a flame yeah. war. Like deal. it's some you sort know, of major minor, thing. Like Whatever that, one fanboy can use as yeah. fuel yeah. to like, fight the other fanboys. That's yeah. why I hate I've, flame wars so I've much. I've seen yeah. Call, I've seen Call of Duty Ghosts on Xbox One, and I've seen it on PS4, and they look yeah. they, they look identical exactly. to me. You know, I'm sure yeah. I'm sure somebody with a fine microscope could tell the difference, but they look the same to me. Well, I, I think that, that Microsoft's already kind of uh, working to uh, change that because weren't they ch- taking some of the allocations uh, of, away from the Kinect to give to developers to use in their yeah. games if well, they didn't then, want to utilize the Kinect? From, yeah. from what I've heard, another problem was uh, their, uh, their whole... Uh, SDK, you know, wasn't quite ready, and they were waiting for the next update to that, and that's actually what uh, what what people over at Respawn were waiting to to finish up the Xbox One version of Titanfall because you know uh, once uh, I think I think it actually just came out uh, this month early, earlier in January. With the new development kit. Yeah, and uh, and and that actually you know uh, fixed uh, a lot a lot of the problems that uh, developers were having with uh, you know uh, allocations as far as resources in the console and stuff like that, and. Uh, I think uh, at, as time goes on, and uh, uh, if not this year, definitely the next year, I, I think all games on Xbox One are going to are, are going to be 1080, and, and PS4 the same because you know, PS4 has also had some games into that that weren't in that weren't weren't native 1080. Of course, no one likes to talk about that, but yeah, of course not. Yeah, I, I think um, like in the last generation, um, when the PlayStation 3 came out, um, developers were having a tough, tough time, very um, tough time, uh, developing games for that system. 
But once they figured it out, we got to see some great, great games for the console. It, it just takes yeah, time. Like, it does. You know, last, last generation, PlayStation 3 was way more powerful than the Xbox 360, but the 360, it was a lot easier to develop. But at the same time, they had some great, great content, you know, um, yeah. and I had a blast. So I think it's going to be similar to this. Like, yeah, the PlayStation 4 is going to be, you know, po more powerful than the Xbox One. But it, what matters the most is the content, man. Like, all this nonsense, like, Sony versus Xbox is just a freaking waste of time, man. I might, it is. It, it like, is. I hate Flame Wars. Uh, so, on the last generation, on. on the last generation, all you got to do is look at Perfect Dark and then look at Halo 4. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, that's that that's Perfect Dark Zero looked like a regular X original Xbox yeah. game, and then Halo Four looked it incredible. Away. You know, so yeah. <clears throat> Halo even Halo Reach, yeah, I think Halo Reach yeah. was freaking yeah. amazing. Like, <clears throat> graphically, was it, was it looked great? You yeah, know? Crisis, so, Crisis Two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look at the look even at the beginning, look at <clears throat> Gears of War when it first came out. That oh, game yeah. still to this day was beautiful. Yeah, you know, and let me tell you, when we were at E3, game. when we were at A3, and, and they showed, uh, I think it was Cliff, that he went on stage and he showed Gears of War for the first time, I was like, no, this can't be a, a 360 game. Like, this, is really a 360 <laughs> this can't game. be real. Look at those graphics, <laughs> you know, and, and everybody was saying, you know, PlayStation is more powerful, and, and they showed us this game, was it Killzone? Did they show, like, the, the first time they, they presented... Um, that was running uh, on a high-end PC the, or something? Yeah. Well, I can remember. I know they showed a, this game that everybody thought was going to look like that, but it wasn't like that That was all. Killzone. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was Killzone. Killzone. It was could, Killzone, right? Yeah, right. and, and they, 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 it wasn't running on a PS3 at all. And, uh, they you know, they, they I think that's what everybody thought with Killzone uh, Shadowfall. Yeah. That everything, every when they first showed that, they were like, okay, is this going to be a Killzone all over again or whatever? Oh, or Killzone yeah. 2, whichever game it was. But, yeah. um. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, as far as those specs go, I mean, it, it, it's really kind of ridiculous. I hate Flame Wars more than anybody because I'm a, a big supporter of both consoles. And, uh, you know, the reason I like both consoles is because they're both great in their own ways. And, and Exactly. It, it's yeah. not... And it's, we're having fun. We're having fun, man. Who cares? Like, what, like, I don't know what's the goal on making, like, saying, oh, I want Nintendo to fail. I want Xbox to fail. Sony, like, why? Like, you know, they're they're working so hard to... Not only, uh, you know, releasing great products, but these games, it's like, we're, we we never had those type of games back then. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that. And I, I want them, I want everybody to win. You know what I'm saying? So the more, the more competition, the better for me. Yeah. More content for the show, more entertainment for me, you know? Absolutely. So. All right, and then um, so back to Microsoft. Uh, they, uh, I don't know if you've heard of her, but uh, supposedly they're doing uh, this next update for Windows 8.1, and also going to be updating the Xbox One to kind of bring uh, the two platforms more closer together, which brings uh, the possibility of cross-platform apps as well as games, and uh, you know, kind of uh, making the two uh, environments uh, one uh, Most really. Apples. And uh, yeah, um, I hope that happens. Yeah, <laughs> me, me too. too. I think that could yeah. be a game changer for Microsoft. If it, especially with as many works, people it, that have Windows in their if hands, it works out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, we have a we have our app for Windows uh, eight. So if that happens, that will be a huge plus. So yeah. yeah. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on my Xbox and see Gamertag Radio. Yeah, yeah. It's, hey, man, it's it's just cool. I mean, like honestly, I I'm not gonna go and download a bunch of apps on my Xbox One, but like you know, certain apps, why not? I want That'll HBO cool. Go on my Xbox One. That's all I... I mean, I wish that was... They do it. need to hurry up with that one, yeah. HBO Go is a big one for me, you know. Yeah, I think that one is probably... I'm not 100% sure, but maybe spring? Yeah, I hope so. Coming out. I'm, I hope it's it, out it, in it time for Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I, I think um, I asked I asked Albert about that. Uh, you know, hey, where's HBO Go? And he's like, look, it's a process, but it's not up to them. It's up to HBO. You know, so if, I mean, I'm uh, sure. I know WWE Network is launching in a couple of weeks. By the way, go get it nine ninety nine a month. Right. Uh, <laughs> they're releasing out places in four, places in three, and also Xbox three hundred and sixty, but no Xbox One. And I heard that they're releasing that in the for like the su summer twenty fourteen. Wow! You know, so it's like ah wow. oh, man, because I didn't even turn on my Xbox out of my three hundred and sixty at all. You can't so, even get HBO Go on Windows Phone eight right now which is, is so weird because it seems like such a big app 
Um, and you yeah. can get it on every platform known to mankind almost now. So why can't you get it on Windows 8 phone, which is That's one of the re- I think they're waiting. I think they're waiting for – this is just me. It's not that I'm saying this. But I think they're waiting for, like, the right – the right amount of units to be out there like okay we're confident okay there's 3.9 million consoles sold why not let's release the app you know yeah um, i mean at game of thrones it'd be nice to see them release it right around the time game of thrones is about to premiere which is the beginning of april april so uh, i mean that that would be nice because like you said i mean that's you you talk about a good way to push smart glass i mean they've already done it once you know with the new season of game of thrones coming out release the app on xbox one push the new smart yeah. glass app it seems like a win for everybody right yeah you know so i think they're gonna make they're gonna be making more announcements during uh gdc uh and i know that uh phil spencer is gonna be at uh what's the name of that conference in austin oh my god uh, south by southwest he's gonna be there jeff Kelly is gonna do like a q a a uh, panel with with phil so he's probably gonna be announcing a couple of things and that's gonna happen I believe the end of this month, right? Or maybe in March. I think April, well, February or March around that time. I don't know the the dates, but we'll see some announcements soon. Yeah, I, I, I think they're sure. announce some stuff for sure. So, and then um, lastly, uh, speaking of announcements, uh, predictions for for E three, uh, and uh, just uh, kind of what would what, what would all, uh, all of you guys like to see come out of E three this year? Games, 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 games. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah. It, any games, yeah. Of, uh, any games in particular, or any older franchises that you would like to see uh, rebooted, brought back to life? I would like to see Perfect Dark. Uh, mm. I hope they could bring it back. Yeah, mm-hmm. they could bring mm-hmm. that back. I don't know the chances, the right way? but yeah. For me, it's uh, Conquer because Conquer Live and Reloaded oh, was Conquer. one of my favorite games on the original Xbox. Yeah. Just gotta say that. There's... Have you noticed that Rare has been really, really quiet lately? Very quiet. Like they've been really quiet. Like when it comes to like, yeah, they had Connect Sports, yeah, whatever. But I think they're working on something, man. You know, I'm sure they are. I think so. I mean, I, um, I, I would like to see, uh, you know, some uh, some RPGs, something. Yes. You know, um, that would be cool. Um, you guys could go on. I'm still thinking. <laughs> I, I want to see. I want to see their plans to to kind of take care of all the things that people want to see changed. Uh, some of the new content yeah. they want to bring. I know they talked about the live TV uh, or the the entertainment, the Xbox entertainment. Oh, yeah, I want to see yeah. more of that. Uh, and of course, uh, the same same with Godfrey Games, Games, Games. I want to see boatloads of games. Well, and yeah. since they're working with EA a lot lately, a partnership with Bioware for a new Jade Empire. That'd be nice. That's not going to happen, but it would be incredible. I don't, I don't see that happen. <laughs> it won't happen, but it, it's not going to happen. But man, would that be awesome? Yeah, that that was one of my another one of my favorite games on the original Xbox. I just can't wait. I'll say it again, Inquisition. I, I'm just mm, I cannot wait yeah. for a new Dragon Age and a new Mass Effect. Yeah. Bioware is just I love them. I, I think they are probably going to have because they like to announce games first in Sony. Because you know they always have like the first press conference. Yeah. Um, which which uh, so sometimes probably... which sometimes feels kind of like a mistake. Like I, I sometimes I, I almost wish that they would wait and let Sony go first. No, it's not. It, it's not. What what you mean by by a mistake by doing that? Like this past year. Yeah. But, um, I, I, yeah. I guess. Sometimes I I feel like some of the things Sony does in in their press conference or or what they say is a reaction to things that happens in Microsoft's press conference, which I do think kind of works in their favor sometimes. And I mean, they do. If, yeah. They do. If there truly is uh, a, a, a Xbox One without a disk drive or uh, some some version of the Xbox that they can announce for 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 three ninety nine yeah. yeah for three ninety nine that uh, that's going to be big. But then I uh, I also heard uh, a rumor that the white Xbox could possibly be an upgrade over the Xbox One, like the one that's yeah, already out. Terabyte, well, 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 well yeah. be, being a terabyte hard drive and also having a built in Bluetooth. Yeah, which would be oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and that. At that time, they would lower the price of the Xbox One that's out now oh, down see. down to three ninety nine. Uh, it might be so. too soon, though. I mean, you just had a whole it bunch of people. Soon, yeah. You just had a whole bunch of people pay four ninety nine for an Xbox, for and then a year later, you do a price drop on that. I don't know if that. Just, Microsoft does it all the time with Surface and their other products. I, so, something's going on with a, a, a new uh, yeah. a, a new white Xbox, sure, and, sure. and and it's going to be cheaper to to price compete with Sony. Microsoft themselves have pretty much confirmed that yeah, by, it, by, by, by going against trying to hunt down the person who leaked this stuff. I think yeah, the one yeah. I think the one that, that the, you'll see that'll be price dropped is the disk driveless one, if that's true. Uh, I think yeah. that that'll be the one that'll go for three ninety nine. Yeah. Um, 
As far as games, games for E3 that I want to see announced, and it's it's a you know a third party game, not specifically related to Microsoft, but I want to see Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, uh, we uh, we we are we are actually um, at the end of the show right now. So um, yeah, it's uh, been a good episode, and uh, we, we appreciate you rolling on with us, bro. Yeah, man. Anytime, anytime. You know, the thing is, I've been really uh, busy. Cause the thing is, I'm. I'm uh, I'm heading out to uh, LA on Monday because I'm we're gonna be checking out Timefall. Over yeah. There. Okay. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to like I, I have to like go to my computer now and start editing all the episodes that are recorded because I'm gonna release them all tonight. So I'm gonna have no time tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be strictly Super Bowl. Family. <laughs> family <laughs> no, you know none of that. So uh, well, we appreciate you coming yeah, on the show, man. We really do. What's up? We well, appreciate you having you coming on the show, man. It was a, it was no, good to have. Thanks you. for the invite, man. You know, I, I love uh, you know I love meeting other podcasts and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's my thing, you know. Um, and uh, nah, good luck with everything, man. You know, with, with the with the show and and guys, you know, whenever you guys want, um, check us out, gamertagradio.com, and uh, yeah, download our, our show, our podcast. Yeah, you know? great, great podcast over there, at Gamer Tag Radio. You yeah. know, one of the inspirations for us to start ours. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> but uh, word, word of advice, guys, just do your thing. Don't worry about numbers. Just keep on with the content, and and that's gonna definitely gonna bring a lot of people to listen to your show. And they're the ones gonna be spreading out, you know, the message like, hey, look, you gotta check out Frag Tag Radio. It's pretty dope. And, and slowly, you will get your audience. You know, what I'm saying even more. You know. So, All right, man. Just continue with your hard work, man. That will help. Man, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, right. uh, it's been a good episode, and we will catch y'all next week. Frag Attack Radio.